and it's Lisa from Lisa Loves channel here to do a review on behalf of Geek Legion of Doom today. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Mr. Cleaver for you. Um, it's a 2018 movie and it's a throwback to old 90s style slashers, the type of which you used to see penny a pound in, uh, in the video stores, those ones with the pretty grotesque covers. So yeah, that's what we're reviewing today. Before I get into the movie, I'll give you some of the details as always. This one is written and directed by Nick Wendelsdorf um, and amongst the cast, the main stars we have are Alexandria Gurino, Ian M. Andriguez, Ronnie Kerr and Patrick Donoghue. We have quite a few other stars here. Um, I will list them hopefully for you over the top while I'm talking but those are the main um, characters we have. So, Mr. Cleaver, to give you a rough synopsis without giving away too much of the plot, this follows a group of teenage punks who break into an abandoned warehouse, um, do what punks do, um, have a bit of fun, have a bit of a party, um, get it on with one another, there's a few sex scenes in there, um, and amongst this group of punks we have one that is psychic. One of those, yes. So we sort of think, oh, well, this is going to come into play. Um, unfortunately for them, they break into a warehouse that is actually not abandoned, but inhabited by Mr. Cleaver. Mr. Cleaver started life as a very normal man um, who, one of those men that just one day everything got too much. A group of his um, people that worked for him being not entirely pleasant about his wife, um, and he just saw red and fired everyone. So in that rash moment of deciding to fire all his staff, he can't quite cope and manage by himself to run the business. An inspector calls and he fails the inspection miserably and ends up having to, to close down. Um, he goes home and things aren't much better there. He's got a very, very naggy, full-on bossy wife. Um, it's just it's the type you always see when you get guys that grow up to be serial killers that have the domineering mothers, guys that are sort of closet weird people that, that attack people, oh they have a domineering wife, same story here. Um, so the wife is just in his ear and he cracks. I don't want to tell you too much about everything that happens after that but just stuff ensues after this point. Um, we do get that bit of backstory in the middle of the movie and um, we do get introduced to Mr Cleaver um, and the after effects of what his breakdown, for want of a better word, has done. Um, you can guess, Mr. Cleaver, this is a slasher. Um, so he's in wait in the warehouse for these teenagers and you can imagine what happens. Um, it is a bit gruesome. The weird thing about this one and what makes this slasher that bit different from most is he doesn't just kill people, he kills them to eat them. So that makes things a little bit different. Um, originally when he was actually holed up in this warehouse to start with, um, I'm hoping this isn't a bit of a spoiler, he actually got into this by having nothing to eat and he had to resort to chopping off his own fingers and eating himself. So that sort of gives you an idea of the gruesome detail we're going into here. Um, so what did I think of the movie? This movie started um, within... Right, first of all the credits are very in your face, very heavy punk music over the top. I like a lot of punk music, hated it, very noisy, very distorted in your face, hated the credits. It just seemed like a want to mismatch together as many offensive images with nondescript items. We had like scenes from the Holocaust, we had scenes which looked like all kinds of blood from an abattoir or something. But really, really weird credits that just seem to be that way to shock rather than anything. The movie started, um, I'll be honest, if I wasn't reviewing it for Geek Legion of Doom, I would probably have turned off within the first five to ten minutes. Um, I will get to the fact that I obviously didn't and I'm glad I didn't. The acting in this movie is pretty bad, I'm going to be honest. Um, across the board, it is a small movie. It's a small independent movie. The budget of this one is, I did write it down, estimated to be $25,000. Um, so a small budget. Um, it is a bit laughable in places. Uh, I think there's a lot of overacting. There's a lot of dodgy camera angles. It's very film studenty in its approach. But what really surprised me 
when you get past that whole original, oh, this is a bit, you know, low, low sort of like quality here, the sound's not great. But what I have to say for this movie is um, the special effects were really, really good. Um, I felt we could have done an awful lot more with those had they been utilised a lot more. We've got, um, just to give you a few examples, we've got a decapitation, we've got um, dismemberment, we've got uh, we've got some really, really grotesque disemboweling things like this, and it's all pretty well done. The given the quality of the acting. I expected the effects to be terrible, but the effects in this were actually really, really good. Um, there does seem to be a lot of negatives said about this one online. Um, personally, I think most of the people that are given extremely negative reviews haven't actually watched it all the way through, have probably been put off by that initial acting and have either switched off or just haven't concentrated, whatever. But when it got to the special effects, my interest was piqued. Also, it's really strange. It got to a stage in this movie which was, um, for want of a better word, like a dreamlike state, which involved the psychic who was communicating with someone. I'm not going to say who. Um, and the way it was filmed, the dreamlike state in which it was filmed, um, there was like a, a childish lullaby type creepy soundtrack playing the whole time in the background. Um, the person the psychic was communicating with um, was really weirdly warped in their body, like the position they'd got themselves into. Um, completely like slurred contact lenses, like opaque white. Um, she looked proper creepy, this person that the psychic was communicating with, who was telling her a story and a little bit of background about Mr. Cleaver. Um, and that whole scene, um, the way it was filmed, the lighting, the script, the, the young girl doing the acting, um, I loved it. I thought it was really effective, I thought it was really well done. I thought it was so far removed from the rest of the movie, it left me pondering why did they not take a similar approach to film the rest, because I felt it would have been a lot more interesting. I think they're maybe going for that gritty, sort of urban, down-to-earth, you know, no-frills type approach with the movie, but these very, very subtle changes in the lighting, in the approach, in the script, um, I felt just did it the world of good. Um, it just it completely brought it up from me, from something that I would not waste my time to watch into just me being quite surprised and impressed by how they turned the movie around from something which was, oh dear this is awful, to something which was, yeah this is actually quite effective, this is quite creepy. So. Um, would I recommend this? I would actually recommend this um, to people that watch a lot of horror um, because we do watch um, smaller independent movies with smaller budgets. We do understand that they're not going to be, you know, like Hollywood blockbusters that have got millions of pounds um, or dollars like put into them. So you can't judge them against movies like that and it would be unfair to do so. Um, as in small independent movie, I have seen an awful lot worse. The acting does need a lot of work. Certain things, I mean a character was called Spaz, that's an example of like, really? You know, um, just small things that were a bit silly, certain lines of script which were a bit daft, but they did show the ability and the potential um, to just produce something which is genuinely creepy. The special effects I was really impressed by, thought they were really believable, completely practical, no CGI, so you know, they've they've done it properly in this, um, and I have nothing but admiration for that side of things. So to sum it up, um, I would say, yeah, I would give this one a 5 out of 10, um, about an average score. Um, I didn't think it was amazing, I didn't think it was one of the worst indie movies I've seen. I've actually seen big movies that were worse than this one, to be honest, um, but the special effects and the, the general creepiness of particular scenes did pull the mark of this one up for me. Um, if you like throwback 80s slasher movies, um, the ones you used to see on the video shelves with the really grotesque covers, this one is a gory, bloodthirsty, fun ride. It um, it had heart, that's what I liked about it. So it, it was a bloody fun ride with heart behind it um, and you could see the work that they had put into it to achieve the results um, and I do think for a lot of the part it, it was effective. So um, does it sound like something you would enjoy? Will you look out for it? Have you seen the trailer? What did you think? 
let me know below in the comments and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Over a night from me.